So Kevin, hey, like um, first, let's talk about like congratulations. Like you became a unicorn last year, like um, from an investment led by Ten Tencent. What do you tell us about more about your relationship with Tencent? Like because they are big in like messaging here and China, so. Sure, yeah, we, we announced uh, our biggest raise of $175 million last year um, from Tencent and a few other people. Um, the relationship is good. Uh, they're the ones who pioneered messaging as a platform in China, but if you look at the world over globally, apart from the East, the, the world hasn't seen what that looks like, including India, the US, and other parts of the world. Um, so we're very inspired by them. It's great to have them as a partner. So we get a lot of insights as to what worked for them, what does not work. And you know, people forget they have two very big messaging apps in China. Mm. There's WeChat, and then there's also QQ, which is much more inward focused. But that also has, I think, 600 million monthly active yeah, users. That's a lot. <laughs> which is insane. Uh, and <clears throat> QQ is fascinating in its own way. It's the youth messaging app of China. Yep. And there's a lot more in there than WeChat. So we look at both, and we talk to both um, the teams there at Tencent. OK. So I mean, ten, I mean WeChat, one of the things is like, they're pretty big in payment, too. And you, you are the first one in India to, like, to put payment into messaging too. So can you tell us something more? I think you just wrote that out, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <clears throat> um, we're the first ones to have um, payments built into a messaging app in India. And you know, we're a messaging company, so we focused heavily on our network. How can we make our network deeper, stronger, more meaningful? And we believe payments is at least a start off with simply an extension of messaging. Mm. Why can't sending money and receiving money be as simple as sending a photo? That was the first step. Yep. So today, we, I mean, a couple of weeks back, we launched uh, payments, and we have the ability to send and receive money on the platform. But we also launched something that we call Blue Packets, um, which is inspired by what Tencent has done in China with yep. Hongbao. And the fundamental difference with Blue Packets uh, in India is that India is a v country of a lot of festivities. You have festivals for almost everything. You have Rocky to celebrate the sister. You have yep. Bhaidu to celebrate the brother. Yep. Diwali and a bunch of other stuff that's there uh, in the country. So we're big believers that to, you know, if, you, if you do build technology right, you can bring offline behaviors online, make them better, faster, cheaper, more simpler. Hmm. So the blue packets, our goal is to bring a lot of the festivities yep. where gifts and money shared between people onto the platform. Hmm. And that's where we're starting off. And We've also launched the ability to recharge your phone on Hike itself. Yep. Because the money does, does come into the platform, we want people to be able to expend it in, in a few ways too. Mm. That's where we're starting off. That's our 1.0 on payments. And that's yep. what we launched a couple of weeks back. So you start off with something that kind of fun, blue packets, like if people using WeChat here, like, like they like sending red packets to each other and then things like that. So, <clears throat> so what next? What's your plan going next? I mean, you start with P2P, you start with all this blue packets thing. So what's next? What's next in payment? <clears throat> you know, we're, we're big believers. One of the things that in India people don't realize is that the market is fundamentally very different from the world over, including China. Mm. We have about 300 million monthly active users on the internet in the country. Yep. But only 150, maybe 160 or 70 million people use the internet daily. And then you have a population of 1.2 billion people. So yep. there's a lot of work to be done. So we're big believers that um, the app model itself is broken. Yep. Because India is a prepaid market. 95% of the market is prepaid and they buy their datas and sachets. Mm. On top of that, smartphones are very cheap. Um, so the app model itself is broken because you can't have too many apps on your phone. Yep. So we're a big believer that wherever people spend more time, if you can in a tasteful way bring more services and make them social, that will do extremely well, as we've seen with Hike in the past. So in, when it comes to payments and messaging, yep. you know, we can now enable ride sharing, ordering food, and a bunch of other stuff in the platform. Yep. But the question that we're asking is, can we do that in a way that's very, very social? Yep. A lot of these behaviors in the world offline are group behaviors. Yep. So can you build an experience where it's very seamless in a group fashion to be able to transact with these services on the platform? So in the next six to 12 months, uh, we want to bring these services in a very unique form inside a hike. So, <clears throat> so you're trying to bring the, bring the social element into all this payment thing. Like, do you have some examples? Like, how, how can you bring like payment into this social 
Like, what, how, how does that work? Like, well, yeah, I think, look, if you look at WeChat, you can yep. book a taxi, you can book a bunch of stuff, but it's very one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. I can do something, um, and, but doing stuff with, with my friends in real time is very difficult. A small example is going for movies yep. is a very social experience. You most likely go with a group of four or five friends. Mm -hmm. But if you see how movie tickets are bought today, it's a very convoluted process where you have to figure out sort of show times and, and in what movie you want to watch and you know, the payment of it and so on and so forth. And I think the only way to make that social is after the fact you can split the bill. Yep. But choosing a movie also is very social too. Choosing um, which place to go to is very social too. Yep. Movie is never a standalone experience. You have to, you know, people go have dinner after that as well. Can we stitch the whole experience together as one thing we're considering at night today? Okay, so you mean maybe people check about the movie and then they can like just pay in the group and, and things like that? Not only that, but just how do you make it very human? Mm. You know, offline, if I chat to you about a movie, it's very easy for us to figure out and pick times. Right. But when you're at a distance in a chat, it becomes a lot trickier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. how can we solve that? And also, now that we have payments, the transacting experience all together end to end. Okay. So we're thinking about those kind of experiences inside a hike. Okay. So the question is like, like the topic of this is about uh, is payment the future of messaging? So why why payment? I mean, do you see that as a way to engage? and attract users? Or do you think that is a monetizing tool itself? Uh, I think both, eventually. Mm. It starts off with engagement. Like Our goal is we today don't make revenue. We don't even plan to until mid to end of 2018. We're just building a very solid product. Mm. And we believe that if today people spend 24 minutes per day inside Hike, which is huge. Mm. And how do we make that number 30, 35? That's one of our goals. Mm. And we believe that bringing payments inside the application will lead towards that as we roll out not only social payments, but also transactions in the platform, as we just discussed. Mm. Over time, that will definitely lead to monetization. Once yep. people start transacting the app, the big question becomes, what are they transacting with, and where are the margins built? Mm. And I'm a big believer that um, you know, people will transact in two realms. They'll transact in the virtual world yep. and the real world. Yep. And you know, the virtual world, we've seen business models globally emerge where people are buying stickers and other virtual items. But yep. if we enable ride sharing and commerce through Hike, people will transact there too. And on all of this stuff, it gives you an opportunity to monetize the platform as well. Yeah. But currently, you're not like, uh, charging any fees for transactions on your platform, right? Not yet. No, we, we, yet. we think P2P should be free. P2P should be yeah, free. Absolutely. But how about transactions with like merchants? So today, we, d we allow people to top up and recharge. Yeah. Uh, we do make a small fee out of that, but that's passed back to the users. So we yeah. don't make money, money from that. Our goal for the next 12 to 18 months is just drive engagement on the platform. But if we do that longer term, you get opportunities to monetize the user base. So you're going to open the platform for more merchants to, to be able to, to transact on your messaging app, right? Hike. Yeah, absolutely. I think what people don't realize is that because the app model is so tricky in India, because data is you know, tricky to understand and smartphones are cheap, mm. the uninstalled rates for apps are twice the global average. Right. So if it's not a daily use case, people don't keep those apps on their phones. Mm. And given our active user base is so large, we believe we can give the tens of millions of users who come to the app, we can give that distribution to people who want to come on the platform and give them access to a user base and, and jumpstart their business. So I think in 12 months, you'll, within 12 months, you'll see us do a lot more of this stuff. Don't be surprised if you see many transactional services inside Hike in the next six, 12 months. You mentioned something about what's unique about Indian market, like they use cheap smartphones, internet is not very good in some parts of the area. In Euro, rural India, the people don't even have internet. So do you see the problems as like your, your obstacles, or do you see opportunities there? I think obstacles are opportunities. Okay. Um, <laughs> from day one, Jackie, our goal has been, how do you bring India online in the simplest way possible? Hmm. India is the first and only mobile first market in the world, mm -hmm. which means that there's a billion people coming online for the first time in their lives on a mobile device. Even China didn't have that. So yeah. that makes the market very, very different and actually new opportunities emerge to build new interaction models in the country. Mm. Um, we believe messaging can become the gateway and highway through which people consume content and services, especially at the 
middle to long tail of the market. So, um, you know, 1.2 billion people, 300 million sort of kind of monthly active users on the internet, 150 million people using the internet every day, it shows a problem. Mm. It shows the internet's very complicated. Right. And to some extent, potentially even more expensive for people. So there's a large opportunity to go and solve that uh, yeah. in India. And we hope messaging will play a large role and we can see it play a large, ro ro large role in the country. So what are some of your design, like, like um, in the design process, when you think about all these people using like low-end phones and like they may not have good internet, what was the design thinking that you put into to, to think about those people? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. For, we only have three tabs in the app. That's a very important one. We've seen that most of the time, of course, is spent on the, the chatting tab. Mm. We wanted to keep the app simple. The app has to be very light, so we cut the fat from the memory and battery perspective in the app. And third is, it has to work on 2G, because even though a large chunk of the market is 4G, a very large chunk of the market is still on 2G and 3G. Mm. And so it has to work across the board, across all these uh, network types and device types. But more importantly, I think the user experience has to be very, very simple. Mm. You know, Indians, you know, a large part of India is still coming online and they prefer simple services. Right. So as you keep packing in more and more things in the app, you still have to find a way to keep things very simple. And that's why we're investing quite heavily in machine learning to ensure that a lot of these services only pop up in your user experience when they need to. Okay. I think that's very, very important. I think you also like, by putting payment into messaging, you're going against uh, some pretty big rivals. Like messaging, your WhatsApp is pretty big in India, yep. which is like um, <clears throat> the world's largest, one of the. <clears throat> and Paytm, Paytm, the uh, payment services in uh, India is very big too. So how do you see those people? I mean, how do you see your competition? How do you, what's your edge ag against them? <clears throat> I think the core, we, on the messaging side, we believe every country has two apps that do extremely well, and we've seen it globally. I think US has three, four. Mm. China clearly has two. We're seeing the same develop in Korea and Japan as well. India also has two. One is a simple messaging application, and one is a messaging as a platform app. And Hike plays in that second realm where we're building a messaging as a platform app. So you can do much more inside Hike than you can do on other messaging apps inside the country. On the payment side, we see it in our numbers today. We only launched payments two weeks back, and the numbers yep. are looking pretty good because we believe m payments can be simply an extension to your social lives. Mm. And one of the unique things about Hike is that Hike is used with close friends. So the average social network on Hike is about nine to 10 people. Mm. Um, and that's very, very key. And most of your transactions socially happen with those people. Mm. And that becomes very key to how we can develop the ecosystem going forward too. So. Um, Let's see. I think um, we've just literally launched payments two weeks back. Yep. And it lays the foundation of what's possible now in the next six months to 12 months. Because mm. we can bring all these social transaction experiences on the platform very, very quickly. More importantly, in ways that are not possible anywhere else. Mm. Um, we are focused heavily on how to make transacting experiences very social as they are in the real world. Okay. That's the key. OK. Yeah. So any, apart from payment, any other things that you're looking into? Like to, what, what do you think the next big thing in, in messaging? I mean, apart from payment. Oh, we think, we think machine learning is a big deal. Yeah. And it's, I mean, machine learning is such a broad spectrum of things. But our simple goal is I'm, I'm a big believer that today's smartphones are very dumb. <laughs> Uh, unless you have apps that unlock APIs, smartphones don't, don't do much. Yeah. And in a world where you have two million apps, uh, if you want to get you know, discounts and coupons and something, you have to go through 100,000 apps to figure out what you have to get. Hmm. And we believe that's why the one app model that has many services works. But yeah. even inside that application, can you build intelligence so that things only come to your attention when they need to? Hmm. A small example people ask me is, hey, Kevin, this is great, but how do you make sure you put all these services in a messaging application but make it simple? Hmm. And the answer is don't you know, invade the user's you know, attention span unless you have to. Yep. And that's where a lot of context machine learning comes into play. And today we've built something inside a hike that knows time of the day. It knows weather. It knows location. It knows where you're at home, where you're at work. And it can tailor your experiences based on that. Yep. And you'll see us do a lot more of this stuff 
especially when you bring transactional services inside a hike in the next uh, six or 12 months. You mentioned about this one app like system. I observe like in the West, like people usually you install one app for one particular like purpose, right? But in China, like WeChat, they just do, you use it to do everything. You use it to chat to people, you use it to order takeaway and stuff like that. So what, what do you think like the, is going to like, um, going forward? You think the one app model is more superior one or it works better in India at least? I think time will tell. I think the world over, everybody's realizing that the app model is broken. Apps are like CDs. Mm. Um, CDs became obsolete very <laughs> fast. Um, you know, in the desktop world, CDs became a tab in the browser when the internet became pervasive. And we believe a similar trend is happening on mobile, where as the internet's getting cheaper, faster, better, an app is becoming, simply speaking, a contact in the address book. Mm. And I think WeChat's showing the, yep. the, leading the way on that. And we're not a big believer on the bot stuff. Mm. We don't think it makes sense today because the, the AI behind bots cannot understand ambiguity. Okay. If you're talking to a bot and you suddenly swerve off a conversation, the bot will not understand what you're talking about. Mm. And bots only work when they're as close to human beings as possible. Mm. And uh, the, the amazing thing about humans is that we can understand ambiguity really well. Mm. Bots cannot yet which is why all our microservices that are built inside a hike are built in a way where they're all graphical user interfaces. Because in a market like India too, language is such a big problem that people understand graphical interfaces. Mm. So that's the route we've taken inside the application, which is a little more similar to WeChat in China. The yeah. bots are not as good as humans at the, at the moment, but do you think they are going to be like? Oh, sure. sure. I think, no doubt, maybe se five, seven, ten years, but um, Bots are being built to be very narrow right now. Mm. Um, every bot is a specific use case. Yep. Uh, you know, I look forward to the day where bots can work across all services and understand the ambiguity that human beings are so good at doing. No doubt it'll happen in time, not today. So you have been working on the hike for like nearly five years. So anything you want to tell about startup founders? Like what, what's your experience is? I think, um, you just have to want it bad enough. Um, we were working 20 hour days for the last four and a half years and we realized the value of time. You know, time compounds and every decision that you make, time will take it and it'll compound it positively or it'll take it and compound it negatively. And uh, you're always running against time as a startup because either you're up against competition or you're up against your own funding. <laughs> <laughs> and so you have to be able to have a large impact in a very short amount of time that's exponential. And I think that's the, the biggest learning that we've had the last four and a half, five years. Okay, thank you very much. Jackie, thanks. Thank you. Yeah.